Good morning. How's everyone on this gorgeous Sunday, the last Sunday of May? Uh, May, actually, I, I've probably seen this, but May is uh, foster care month. So um, even though we're at the end of that month, we will be praying for those who provide foster care for the many children that are in such great need. So it is May 29th. It is also Memorial Day weekend. And in its solemnity, we also think about those who sacrificed all for our freedoms and to encourage peace in our world. So as we celebrate our worship today, let us remember those who have gone before us. There are a number of announcements, and I call your attention to that page in your bulletin. First of all, uh, we are continuing signing in for contact tracing for COVID as it spikes in various parts, and so we do want to keep track of that. We've also asked all of our activities that take place in the parish hall to um, those people attending those activities to sign in, just so you know. And so, so those of you online also know that we are continuing our precautions with regard to COVID. Uh, tomorrow is the Memorial Day Parade at 10 a.m. The pastors in town will be participating. Actually, Pastor Roger is still in quarantine. Uh, after having COVID, and so Pastor Evan Langloy will offer the opening prayer at the parade ceremonies, and I will offer the benediction, the closing prayer at the ceremonies. And isn't it wonderful that we have a town that still engages the pastors and the churches in celebrating these, these um, awesome um, and, again, solemn holidays. We're so grateful. Men's Coffee meets on Wednesday at 10 a.m. in the parish hall, and Saturday, June 4th, this very next Saturday, is our flea market and artisan sale. And we are also featuring live music. Thank you, Bill Murphy, for coordinating three other musicians who are going to offer live music. It's really going to be lovely. And uh, we, have, we just got another two uh, spaces sold, so we're going to have a number of people offering their wares and... Um, uh, so I think it's going to be a great time. Please encourage people to come, find something they can't live without. You know, that's my mantra, find something I can't live without. And you can see some of the other announcements in your bulletin. We do want to wish um, happy birthday to those who just had the birthdays, Ada Mae Parmalee and George Marshall. George, is it okay if we sing? <laughs> All right, I got a yes. Usually I get the... No, don't sing. But here we go. Day to you. Happy birthday, dear George. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank you. We hope you live to 100. My in-laws have been singing that for so long, and my mother-in-law is now 92. I think she might make it. <laughs> She's one of the first ones who says, we hope you live to 100. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so here we are, people of God. Isn't it wonderful that we can join together in worship? I'm so very grateful. I do want to call your attention to another announcement that is in your bulletin on the last page. We have changed the date of the Vacation Bible School. And I would really appreciate it if you would publish this and talk about it. Uh, we felt that the families <laughs> would need a break right after school ended, and we had scheduled the Vacation Bible School week for immediately following school. And um, parents and teachers and kids need a rest after this school year. And so we've moved the Vacation Bible School to July 5th through the 8th. Uh, some of the families who couldn't attend have um, said that that's a better week for them, and so we are hoping to fill our spaces. We, we still have um, plenty of spaces for children uh, ages 4 to 9, so please talk it up. We do have some flyers if you would like to send them to someone. And, uh, and any questions, please see Margie Sakura or myself. We'll be happy to help you. And then I do want to make sure that you are all invited to the open house for the parsonage 
Um, Rob, would you like to give an update as the, at the end of May? Oh, you, <laughs> well, we might miss people. Yeah, so that'd be great. I don't, don't think that microphone is on. Marilyn puts the pressure on me to get it done. Uh, we had the basement, uh, Connecticut Dry Basement came in and finished the basement. I have to go over this morning because it did rain, so I wouldn't see how that went, but it was very dry and clean and really pretty well done. Um, the plumber, I mean, the towel guy is tiling the bathrooms. Uh, the floors are going in the kitchen on June 6th. The cabinets are all delivered. They're in the living room for the kitchen, which is a good thing. Uh, the bathroom cabinets over there too. Uh, they're gonna come on June 10th to measure for the countertops. The week of uh, June 20th to the 24th is gonna be crazy. The plumbers, heaters, electricians, everybody's gonna be in there going crazy to get it done. So I think we're gonna make it, it should be close to budget and it should be close to being on time. So God willing, we'll get there. Thank you. We uh, do continue to pray for all of our contractors working on that building because it's a really special building to this church. It has housed many families and even has housed some of our Sunday school classes and confirmation classes. And so it has a rich history that we hope to secure uh, through these renovations. So we are very grateful, and th especially grateful to Rob who is managing every inch of space, every dollar spent uh, with such care and detail. It's, um, uh, I personally am so grateful and we, we as a church uh, should be so grateful to him. He's spending a lot of time managing that project. So thank you, Rob. <laughs> he doesn't do it for the glory. He does it for the glory of God, to the glory of God, and um, because it's the right thing to do. So thank you. So now let us join together and enter into our worship portion of our service with our gathering hymn as we really celebrate this country with our gratefulness and our praise to God who reigns over this nation. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able and join in the gathering hymn, My Country Tis of Thee. It is number 695 in the hymnal. <laughs> Thy might, great God, our King. 
Please remain standing as Bill Murphy comes forward to lead us in the call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship, which is from Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving our souls. The decree of the Lord are sure, making the simple wise. The commandments of the Lord are clear, enlightening our eyes. The reverent fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. We desire your will and your ways, for they are to be desired more than fine gold. You are all-knowing, you are ever-present. We worship you today, O God of love. Amen. Please remain standing and join us in singing Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, which is number 608 in your hymnal. Be seated. Our prayer of awareness today is taken from the Lutheran Book of Worship, and it is a prayer for the nation. Please join me. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Make us who came from many nations with many different languages a united people. Defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with the authority of government the spirit of wisdom that there might be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful. And in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. We ask all of this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. On that second to last page of your bulletin are a list of prayer requests, and we continue to pray for our country, for those who still fight for freedom, 
for those who gave their lives for our freedom. We celebrate a joy today in another part of our world, in the country of Turkey, an Armenian church that has, was started in the 1400s has been able to open again. Even though Christianity is becoming very oppressed and persecuted in the country of Turkey, the Armenian church is flourishing. And it speaks to us that in troubled times, we cannot let our faith waver. In times like these, when we see gas prices skyrocketing and oil prices putting fear in the hearts of many people, we must not let our faith fail. We must encourage one another and pray the prayer that we just prayed for our nation, that our trust in God will never waver. We pray for all of those who are seeking health and strength. We pray especially for Dick, for Bill's brother, who just received a kind of a different diagnosis. He has a rare form of cancer that has affected his kidneys and liver. And so we pray for Dick Murphy, that God, in your mercy, you will touch this man, touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Give the doctors and technicians and everyone ministering to him, give them wisdom and understanding. Give them keen discernment to know exactly how to treat him. We thank you, O oh God, that Dick and his wife are so optimistic. They have put their trust in you and in their doctors, and we ask that you would be compassionate and merciful to him. We pray for all of those who are facing a diagnosis, who are facing a procedure, whether it's a simple procedure or a decision about their lives. We pray, Lord, that you would give those wisdom. We pray for those who are making deci decisions about their elderly parents. I pray for my husband, Michael, his sisters, Barb and Terry, and their brother, Peter, as they try to make decisions for their mom. We pray for all of those who are facing the aging process, who are seeking wisdom as to how to make transitions, we pray that you would be walking with them on this journey of aging. We thank you, O oh God, for the many graces that you have shown, and we pray especially today, Lord, for the families in Uvalde, Texas, and in Buffalo, New York, for the losses that they have suffered at the hands of violence. We pray for all of those families even back to Sandy Hook and before Columbine and others, that every time something like this happens, the memories are opened up, the wounds are freshened. And we pray, Lord, that you will guide this country, that you will guide us in both the areas of gun control and mental health, that we would work together, that we would have wisdom to know how to help people who are in the throes of such depression or anger or whatever emotion would drive them to violence. We pray, Lord, that our country, every person, would turn to you and put their trust in you and that you would reign and rule in their hearts and minds. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would have mercy on this land, and that we, this small congregation, would stand in proxy for the many others who haven't entered into your presence, but they need your covering, Lord. So we pray that you would have mercy in the name of Jesus. Are there others for whom we may pray? Is it? Yeah. Green light. Yep. Uh, neighbors for my prayer, Sue. She had a tough week with her um, Alzheimer's, so we pray that she gets some new meds and gets back on her feet. 
Uh, also prayers for my mother-in-law who's uh, fighting Alzheimer's. Um, as many of you know, I took Lily down to Arizona this week, and it's funny because sometimes things go differently and you don't really think about God's timing in your life and how things function and, and you know, thanking him. So we were on our, our second day, we just finished our second day of trip and the transmission went in our car. But it, it, we got off the highway and it slipped and we got, we were able to get into the hotel and it was eight o'clock at night, nothing was open. So I went online, checked out a bunch of, uh, we're in Indianapolis, which is a good sized city. So I checked out a bunch of uh, transmission places. So we got up early and we, we were optimistic we're gonna go and they could do something, but they were like, oh, it's really the clutch assembly. And I had sent a text to Marilyn to pray for me that night. And she said something that I thought about you know, the next morning when I got up is that God's timing is always perfect. So I was thinking, how is this timing perfect? <laughs> <laughs> we had brought the car for checkup before we left. So we went to the transmission place. He said it was the clutch assembly, which is a computer product he doesn't work on. We called a Ford dealer. They can't get it in, but they said there's another Ford dealership 20 miles down the road, but the car was iffy. So we called them, they said they could look at it. So we get on the road and it started slipping in the highway, but we got it to the place and they looked at it and they couldn't work on it. <laughs> so now I'm like, okay, God, what's your timing? So we, the guys know there's a nice transmission place down the road when we're in, in Terre Haute where the University of Indiana is, it's a pretty good sized little city. So make a long story short, he can't fix it. I look at renting a U-Haul, but it was gonna be 2,500 bucks to get the car down, plus fixing it, wasn't worth it. So I'm sitting there and the transmission is starting to slip real bad and I'm thinking maybe we should just try to get to St. Louis, which is like 300 miles away, so they could fix it maybe. And then this, the transmission went, I was on a road like East Windsor, tons of brand new car dealerships. So we bought a new car, but it was the timing that everything was there, because once we left there, it was 300 miles between cities and highways. So sometimes you think, man, why is God doing this to me? But you really have to think, God did it for me at that time for a purpose. So I, I'm very grateful in my faith for God for, you know, getting us there safe and really that I was able to, we were able to work together with God to get it done. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And what I said to Rob was, imagine if he had gotten her to Arizona safely and then it happened. She'd be all alone dealing with that problem. And so God's timing is perfect. We may not like it all the time, <laughs> but it is perfect. Will you join me in prayer and then uh, saying the Our Father together? Holy God, just as the apostles asked when you said that they could go, they could go because it was going to be a little tough. The going was going to get difficult. And they turned to you and they said, where would we go? To whom would we go for comfort, for peace, for security, for safety. Where would we go? We lift our eyes. We lift our eyes to the hills. Where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord, our God, who never slumbers or sleeps. The God who watches over us never sleeps. God's timing is perfect. Your will is our desire. Your ways are our goal. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for who you are and how you touch our lives, how you intervene in ways that we are not even aware of. We thank you, O oh God. And we pray in the words that Jesus gave us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We take these moments now in our service to give back to God a small portion of what God has given to us. Our morning offering will now be received.
Amen. Will you stand for the doxology? join me in the prayer of dedication. We are grateful for all you provide, O Lord, as we remember those who gave all to serve and protect this country. Our hearts are full of thanks. We give this offering today in memory of those loved ones who served in every branch of our military. We offer our thanks to their families, and we strive to carry on the spirit of generosity that their lives exhibited. Please accept our offering as we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture reading today is from Acts chapter 15, 16, verses 13 through 40, which does appear in your insert. On the Sabbath, we went a little way outside the city to a riverbank where we understood some people met for prayer, and we taught the scriptures to some women who came. One of them was Lydia, a saleswoman from Thyatira, a merchant of purple cloth. She was already a worshiper of God, and as she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart, and she accepted all that Paul was saying. She was baptized along with her household, and asked us to be your guests. If you agree that I am faithful to the Lord, she said, come and stay at my home. And she urged us until we did. One day, as we were going down to the place of prayer beside the river, we met a demon-possessed slave girl who was a fortune teller and earned much money for her masters. She followed along behind us shouting, these men are servants of God. They have come to tell you how to have your sins forgiven. This went on day after day until Paul, in great distress, turned and spoke to the demon within her. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, he said, and immediately it left her. Her master's hope of wealth were now shattered. They grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the judges at the marketplace. These Jews are corrupting our city, they shouted. They are teaching the people to do things that are against the Roman laws. A mob was quickly quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the judges ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden whips. Again and again, the rods slashed down across their bare backs, and afterward they were thrown into prison. The jailer was threatened with death if if they escaped, so he took no chances but put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet into the stocks. Around midnight, As Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to the Lord, and the other prisoners were listening, suddenly there was a great earthquake. The prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer wakened to see the prison doors wide open, and assuming the prisoners had escaped, he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul yelled to him, Don't do it. We are all here. Trembling with fear, the jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down before Paul and Silas. He brought them out and begged them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved and your entire household. Then they told him and all his household the good news from the Lord. The same hour he washed their stripes and he and his family were baptized. Then they brought them up into his house and set a meal before them. How he and his household rejoiced because all were now believers. The next morning, the judges sent police officers over to tell the jailer, let those men go. So the jailer told Paul they were free to leave. But Paul replied, oh no, they don't. 
They have publicly beaten us without trial and jailed us, and we are Roman citizens. So now they want us to leave secretly? Never. Let them come themselves and release us. The police officers reported to the judges who feared for their lives when they heard Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. So they came to the jail and begged them to go and brought them out and pled with them to leave the city. Paul and Silas then returned to the home of Lydia where they met with the believers and preached to them once more before leaving town. The word of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today is a day of remembrance, memorializing those who fought and died for freedom. And to those of you who have known a soldier who paid the ultimate cost, the, the ultimate price, in whatever branch of military service, in whatever rank, in whatever country or arena of war, we offer our thanks for your gift of love because I'm sure it cost you or your families something as well. And for those who served and came back to live a life of continued service, it still costs you in many ways that most of us cannot even begin to understand or resolve what people live with after such service. All for freedom. May God's peace rule and reign in your hearts today. As today's scripture was read, I wonder if you noticed how many people were set free. First, there was Lydia. I always said if I had a daughter, I would name her Lydia. Because this woman, who was already a worshiper of God, needed her heart opened. Her heart was locked up. But the word of God opened, unlocked her heart. Yes, even worshipers of God need to be set free. Free of all kinds of things. Free of judging others. Free of racism of all kinds. Free of selfishness or self-hate. Free of lust of every kind habits that hold on so tightly, and a hundred other things. Lydia needed to be set free, and she was. Then we have the fortune-telling slave girl. She was a slave, all right. She earned her masters a good bit of money, but she knew she was a slave. She was under their control. She was a slave to her masters and a slave to the sin that she practiced. Paul and Silas, even though she was yelling, oh, these men are telling you how to have your sins forgiven, they knew that she was like speaking with forked tongue because on the one hand, she's sinning, and on the other hand, so they knew that there was something, right? And they said no. And they called the demon out of her, and immediately it left her, and she was set free. Now, her masters didn't like it because they just lost their income. They lost their tool. They lost their slave. But I'm hoping, even though we don't hear about it in the Word of God, I'm hoping that her masters got some kind of freedom as well. Then we have the dutiful jailer, just doing his job, locking up Paul and Silas. But consider this, because even though we are decades after Jesus has died, the many years after Jesus' death, the knowledge of him, the knowledge of his love, the knowledge of the healings, the knowledge of his teaching, the love that he showed, even the least of these, was very well known. Jesus' death, his resurrection, and his ascension was well known 
all these decades later. And this, his disciples, having received the infilling of the Holy Spirit, they were speaking with power and authority. So this jailer knew exactly what he was up against. He knew what could happen to him if Paul and Silas escaped that jail. He knew that if that power, the same power that rolled away the stone as Jesus was resurrected from death and darkness, if that same power took place, he would have to kill himself because what the Roman authorities would do to him if that took place would be far worse. They would disembowel him alive. Romans 8.11 tells us that same power that raised Jesus from the dead will touch your mortal body. That same power. And that jailer knew that he would pay with his life if Paul and Silas escaped. And that power did manifest itself. And that prison was shaken to its foundation. And all of those chains were loosed. Their feet were in the stocks. And they were broken apart. And when that jailer woke up, he was scared. First of all, I can't even believe he slept. I'd be right outside that dungeon door. But he went some other place and slept because he thought that they were surely secure. He saw that Paul and Silas must be free. That's our third example. Because they were set free, but they didn't leave. But this was his worst fear, this poor jailer. Because this jailer was also a slave to fear. He feared, of course he feared death if these two got loose, but he also feared his supervisors. He feared for his family. What if he were to lose his job? And if he had to take his own life? What fear is that, having to do this to yourself, knowing that it would be worse if he let the Roman authorities punish him? That fear is a real prison. And that jailer needed to be set free. So as he went down to see his fate, and he sees that Paul and Silas could be gone, but they yell out and say, don't kill yourself. We're still here. We're all still here. I just can't imagine it. And I believe that that jailer knew at that moment that he had been touched by that power as well. And that's our fourth example. And then he and his whole household were set free and baptized. <laughs> How many countless people of that, just that one family, the generations that they represented, imagine the number of people who have been set free. So the power of God does shake us to our foundations. If that hasn't happened to you yet, Ask God for it. Ask God to shake you to your foundations. Through all of those past generations, through all of the curses that may have been in your family, every chain, every negative word spoken to you or through you, ask God to shake you to your foundations. So we learn something else here, because once our prison is exposed, we don't need to escape. Paul and Silas didn't escape. They stayed there. They still had a work to do. It's odd. But when we are free, we don't have to escape. I think this is how the Christians in countries that are so oppressing Christianity, I think this is how Christians survive. They know that they are imprisoned in a way, and yet they don't leave because in their hearts they know they are free, free because of Jesus Christ. We are free. God, in great mercy, sets us free. Paul and Silas still had a work to do in that prison, and their freedom had to be recognized and published. They said, oh, no, no, no. You're not letting us go in secret. You made a public display of us, beating us, 39 stripes on our backs, before you threw us in the stocks. No, no, we're not leaving secretly. You're going to acknowledge that you imprisoned Roman citizens as I said to Bill before the service, Paul used that Roman citizen card often to shock people. 
He was educated, and he was a Roman citizen, which meant he had rights. So those police officers and judges who had condemned him, who said, just leave, just leave, he said, no, 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 you're going to acknowledge this, and I'm hoping that some of those people turned, repented, and also were set free by the power of God that they saw exhibited in that prison that day. That's our fifth example of people set free in this one episode. And then Paul and Silas were formally let go. They were told, begged, please leave the city. <laughs> leave before you cause any more havoc. But they didn't leave. They went back to Lydia's house where hundreds more would have their hearts unlocked and be set free. I read this and I thought, whew, that's a lot of work for one Holy Spirit. <laughs> Imagine the power of the truth to set people free. Imagine the power, the impact of these five encounters throughout hundreds of generations since that time. Who knows? Who knows? One of those people could be one of your ancestors. You could be born of one of those tribes. So as we think today and we mourn those who so tragically lost their lives in Buffalo and Uvalde, not to mention all of our soldiers, but we think back even to Sandy Hook, we think of the mental state of the persons who were also slaves, slaved to their thoughts, slaved, enslaved to the positively demonic influences in their lives, whatever the source, to drive people to such violence that result in such horror, and pain that will also reverberate through generations. We don't know the prison that another person lives in. We just don't know. Lord, have mercy on us. Setting one person free, one person at a time, can change a world. As I read this, for some reason, Helen Keller kept coming to mind. And Helen Keller is one such person that got sent free. If you've never seen the original movie, The Miracle Worker, please try to see it. See it if you can. Even if you have seen it, watch it again and see a very young Patty Duke and an amazing Anne Bancroft portray Helen and her teacher, Anne Sullivan. Helen, as you may know, was stricken in when she was 19 months old. Before the age of two, she was stricken with a disease that left her deaf, blind, and basically mute. Now, she was free to roam around the house, more like a wild animal than anything else. But she was anything but free. She was trapped in a world of darkness and silence. She could not communicate with others and no one seemed to be able to communicate with her until Annie Sullivan, who had overcome her own chains, until Annie Sullivan came and set Helen free. It was no easy task and if you watch, you can just YouTube one little episode, six or seven minutes, about how Annie first got there and looked at Helen roaming around the dining room table, eating like an animal off other people's plates. And Annie told everyone to leave the room. And the encounter, it's just an amazing seven minutes that I think everyone should watch. The love that Ann Sullivan had for Helen, who she didn't even know, but she saw the entrapment. That enslaved little girl broke Ann Sullivan's heart, opened her heart 
to love Helen, I think in some ways Anne Sullivan, the love that she showed Helen is a pure example of sacrificial love. Anne Sullivan herself had to overcome tremendous obstacles, and I'm not sure if you know it, but she was born right near here in Feeding Hills. She was afflicted with trachoma at the age of five, and that left her unable to read and write. There was no one to teach her. She did end up going to the Perkins School for the Blind, and she overcame her disability, and at the age of 20, she became Helen's teacher. And more than that, she became Helen's redeemer of sorts. Another time, I think we should talk about what a kinsman redeemer is. We all have a redeemer and a kinsman redeemer. Helen went on, because she was set free, she went on to be the first deaf-blind person to graduate with a bachelor's degree from Radcliffe. She wrote many books, and she advocated for the rights of, dis of those with disabilities. She made a difference in the world, all because of the redeeming love and care and dedication of Annie Sullivan. Now, we can be redeemed, too. There is a person who advocates for you, a person who has dedicated his life to set you free, a person who cares for you and loves you more than he loves his own life, and that person is Jesus. Helen Keller fought Ann Sullivan tooth and nail, threw her off chairs, slapped her, bit her, fought tooth and nail for weeks but Annie never gave up. She broke through that darkness and that cage of silence. Some of us fight our Redeemer all our lives. Ephesians 2 tells us clearly, but God, I love that it starts, but God, rich in mercy, never giving up on us because of God's great love, even when we were dead in our wrongdoings, even when we bite and fight tooth and nail to do it our own way, to make our own decisions, to be free. But God makes us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved so that in the ages to come, God might show the boundless riches of that love and that grace. By that grace, you have been saved through faith. That is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Your Redeemer is that God. We can do something that many soldiers cannot. We can stop the fighting and enjoy the freedom. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you join me in singing America the Beautiful? It is number 690 in the hymnal. Please stand as you are able. Yes. 
thy liberty in love. O beautiful, for heroes move in liberating strife, who more than self their country love, and mercy more than From sea to shining sea, from east to west, from the darkest place to the brightest sunshiny place, from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, through every generation, may God reign, may God's grace reign in our hearts and minds, in our souls, in our very bodies. May God reign. And as God reigns in your hearts and minds, may you share that love, that grace with others. We pray, O oh God, that you will be glorified in all that we say and think and do today, that the peace and love in our hearts, because you have saved us, will spill over onto all of those we come in contact with for your glory and honor. In the name of Jesus, amen. Oh, in peace and the peace of God be with you oh, this day. Go oh, in peace and the peace of God be with you always celebrate and share the joy celebrate new lives go in peace and the peace of god be with you always may the peace of christ be with you thank you join us for fellowship across and go in peace amen Oh, we are, yeah, we're having fellowship, yeah. We weren't going to, but I guess we are. Till the thunder sounds no more Till 
the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand. 